Thank you for yet another wonderful opportunity to learn and worship at your feet. Father, we pray that you open the eyes of our understanding, that we may know the manifold blessings, dominion, authority at your disposal. That we as your children will begin to tap into these many resources. We make this prayer in the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. as we take this chorus. SCS will help us. I said, my God who is mighty. Hallelujah. Amen. In the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 37, 
The angel Gabriel said to Mary the Virgin, the mother of Christ, he says, For with God, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. With God, nothing is impossible. Now, the apostle Paul has an idea of what it takes to know the God you serve in order to benefit from his numerous resources. And that was why in Philippians chapter 1, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, in fact, if you start from verse 5 down, he counted all his numerous achievements and all the things he had acquired in life. And towards verse 10, he said he counted all of this as loss for the excellency of Christ. That all he is interested in is that he may know him and the power of his resurrection. A few days ago, we celebrated the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But most of us are yet to know the power behind the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Apostle Paul, in all his experiences, and in all his wisdom, in all his time as an apostle, in spite of all the churches he planted and all the, the, the great things he did for God, was still yearning to know more about this God. Because this God is past finding out. You cannot fathom him up on your own human reasoning or rational thinking. You cannot. He is too big, he is too broad, he is too mighty for you to really understand everything about him with your little knowledge. But if you depend on the Holy Spirit, he will give you a, a revelation of his glory and splendor, as he did unto John in the book of Revelation, and many other apostles and great men of God that walked before him in spirit and in truth. He got to reveal himself to them in various ways. To the Abraham, he revealed himself as the great God, the Hova El Shaddai, his provider, when he provided a lamb for himself for sacrifice instead of Isaac. He has introduced himself to many people in various ways, in various forms. How do you know this God that you serve? Some call him Jehovah Jireh, their healer. Jehovah, their provider. Jehovah, the condition. Jehovah, seeking our righteousness. And so on. Recently, we've heard more names. Jehovah over two. The one that fetches water with the basket to disgrace the bucket. We can go on and on. Get to know him so that you'll be able to tell your neighbor how you know this God. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. That brings us back to our topic, the God of endless possibilities. From what we had our first Bible lesson, 2 Kings chapter 7, from verses 1 down to 17, we see a land that was besieged with We saw the land, we saw that famine was prevalent or took place in the land of Samaria because that land was besieged. What does it mean? What does it mean to be besieged or what does siege mean? Siege simply means a kind of blockage or restriction that stops food and other items from entering into a particular city or location. It is also a kind of war strategy to restrict business transactions and inflow of food and other material resources in order to subject the people or the inhabitants of that community to hardship and lack. And you know, when this happened in the land of Samaria, please when you get back home, read 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 24 down to 30 you will have a background of what transpired in the land of Samaria before chapter 17 when Prophet Elisha gave, made this declaration. It was a terrible situation. The siege is a kind of blockade, a situation whereby all the borders of a particular city or nation is sealed up so that food and other commodities do not come into the city and as soon as the people suffer a lot of hunger, lack and poverty. That was the situation in Samaria when Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all 
his army and besieged Samaria. Hallelujah. Amen. The situation was so bad that two women went into an agreement to kill their children and eat them. This one said, I'll bring my own child today, we kill and eat, then tomorrow we kill your own child and eat. You can imagine the level of hunger. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now the first woman kept to the terms of the agreement, killed her son, boiled him and ate it as the second woman. But when it was time for the second woman to do sin, she hid her own child. Amen. And when the king of Israel was passing by, that first woman that had surrendered her son to be killed for a meal, ran to the king of Israel and said, Help, my lord, O king. And the king responded in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 27. The king said, If the Lord will not help thee, where shall I help thee? Out of the bank floor? or out of the wine press. Hallelujah. This king answered well because he does not have the solution to that problem. Most of us will pretend to know what to do. But the time comes when even our, our uh, technology fails us, uh, science and uh, whatever fails, even our leadership fails because they don't even know what to do. That was the situation in Samaria. So when that woman cried to the king, the king said, he, me, I'm looking for a way to, for, who to help me, who you are coming to me. Where will I help you from? Is it from the uh, bank floor or from the wine press? If the Lord God does not help, even me, I cannot help you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. People of God, I have a question for all of us. In times of difficulty and perplexity, who do you run to? King David. In Psalm 131, verse 1, said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence come my help. That is where true help comes from. And in Psalm 46, verse 1, he also said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So when you find yourself in a tight corner, instead of running from pillar to post, I'm not saying it's bad to run to one friend that can help or the other, but how long will that person continue to help you? Before you know it, he will listen to the story while well, I'm telling you, he came yesterday and would have been able to help you. But if you run to God, the silver and the gold belong to him. The cattle of a thousand hills belongs to him. He knows which button to press for that help to come. He knows exactly what to do for help to come. Hallelujah. Amen. The people in the city of Samaria, they go to a point they will call a, a point of hopelessness. But God showed up. He showed up in the miracle of the land to not help them. God used ordinary lepers. The situation in Samaria was quite pathetic. So bad that people were selling their children. The children they are supposed to cater for, they were selling them. Oh, okay, they were not being said. They were cooking them to eat. They killed them and boiled them. Boiled them with pepper soup with their own children and ate. Then they said, tomorrow you will make pepper soup with your own child. Can you imagine? No, some of us are feeling that uh, these two women went too far, isn't it? But it's not be boiling our own children to eat as pepper soup, but we are selling them. It happened, even during the COVID era. Uh, era. So a woman, carrying uh, two of her children, he tied one on the back and held one by the hand, went to a shop, bought some food items, give me 10 cups of rice, uh, uh, 10 cups of beans, uh, 20 cups of uh, garlic, uh, give me Maggie and this. Gather all the items, when they finish giving to her, she left the other child that she held by the hand. They say, okay, I am coming, let me go and bring money, I forgot my purse. Yours truly. She went away, that child remained in that shop till evening. When the owner of the shop was about to close, he now raised alarm. A woman came here and picked some items and said she was coming to pay one. See the child here. Luckily for them, they were able to trace them. She lived around that environment, locality. And they saw her. And they saw that what you have done is terrible. You could have at least told this man, I don't have money to pay. Can you give me small food to go and eat with my children? 
So it's as bad as that. That is the situation we are passing through in this nation. If somebody had told you like two years ago that in Nigeria you will buy one cup of rice for 600 naira, will you believe? We will buy one cup of garlic for 150 naira. We will buy one kilo of uh, one kg of gas for 1,400. We can go on and on. We wouldn't have believed. But here we are. A few years back, one of our, our leaders, I think it was uh, Major General Yakubu Gowan, that said that the problem of Nigeria is not the money, but how to spend it. But we see where we are today. Actually, it was so as at that time. I remember when we had expatriate teachers from Ghana, from India, coming to pick up million jobs. They were teaching in our, our, our secondary schools. And they were paying them something to just make uh, ends meet for them. We had those expatriate teachers. Very uh, good people, highly intelligent, in, 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 highly intelligent people, very sharp. And they were teaching us sub, uh, several subjects chemistry, biology, physics, maths, and all of that. As at that time, the situation in Ghana was terrible. We were hearing that they were buying a tablet of Lux for 75 uh, pesos, or what they call their currency, then, or CDs. As at that time, a tablet of Lux in Nigeria was 15 naira. A tin of milk was 15 naira, big milk. Now the tin of big milk is 700 naira, hallelujah. But the good news is that God is saying to someone here today that you said a God of endless possibilities. That one day all these things will pass away. As we used to read in the scripture, and it came to pass, and it came to pass, and it came to pass. This era too will go to pass. And God will turn our situation for good in Jesus' name. 26 verse 1. The Bible tells us that when they not turn again the captivity of Zion, they were not again that dream. Hallelujah. Today, Nigerians are sending their children back to the same Ghana that came to Nigeria for help. Do you know the history of uh, the origin of uh, Ghana Mosque? It was when God brought uh, a leader in Ghana who brought about reforms and revolution in Ghana. He insisted that all these people that had abandoned the place for greener pastures should come back home. So there was an ultimatum for them to come back home to Ghana and fix their country. That's why they, they were buying those big bags to pack their luggages. That's why we call it Ghana Malls. Oh, hallelujah. But today they've been able to fix their situation. And now we, we send our own children to go and learn and study in Ghana. The Lord that helped them will also help us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's go back to our test. Second Kings chapter 7, verses 1 to 17. Verses 1 and 2. We saw that when these women came to the king to ask for help, the king told them he could not help them. So in his wisdom, he ran to Elisha the prophet and presented the matter before him. That was when Elisha now responded with these words of prophecy. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. The Lord on whom whose arm the king leaned. Now who is this Lord on whose arm the king leaned? It simply means the king's age. All his ADC during military regime. When the president stands, somebody stands behind him. That is his ADC. His aide. Call him personal assistant. He will be branded very well. The king's personal assistant doubted that promise. He, he, he answered and said that it is, that kind of a thing can only happen if God had to open the windows of heaven and pour out those blessings. Hallelujah. And the prophet had to respond. He said, Behold, thou shalt see it with your eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. People of God, unbelief is a terrible thing. Most of us are like that. Because we have seen the sequence, the pattern in Nigeria. If I tell you now that the, the Lord says that by tomorrow, one, two 
people or being 10 cups of rice should be sold for 100 naira. We will don't. In fact, you will even tell me that in Nigeria, when prices go up, they don't come down. But by the special grace of God, they will come down at the first time in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Unbelief is a terrible thing. Let us learn to believe God. And He will fix a situation for us in Jesus' name. Let's always remember that with God, all things are possible. Now, if we go back down, down, down the text, in 2 Kings 17, from 3 down to 17, we saw that God, in his mysterious ways, lifted the siege in Samaria through four lepers. You know, lepers in those days were confined to the outskirts of the community so that they would not infest other people. And they were asked to go along with bells or something that will make noise as they are coming. So when they are coming, you see that the bell is ringing, leper, leper, so that the people that are not leprous will give way, so that they will not get uh, infested by leprosy. So these four lepers are sat by the gate of Samaria, had a conversation with each other. They said, if we, said we will enter into Samaria, the famine that is inside Samaria will kill us. And if we sit tight where we are, ha, hunger will kill us. Why don't we just go into the camp of the Syrians? If they save us, we live. If they kill us, we die. Hallelujah. Amen. Please let me tell your neighbor, learn to take risk. Learn to take risk. Businessmen say that the greatest risk is not to take risk at all. So learn to take risk. These four lepers had to take risk. They weighed all the options. If we go into Samaria, we die of famine. If we sit tight here, we die of hunger. If we fall into the camp of the Syrians, there are two options. They either save us and we live, or we die. So they decided to take that last option. Did they die? No. Hallelujah. Amen. God did not allow them to die. In fact, God used these four lepers to bring deliverance to the entire city of Samaria. Hallelujah. Amen. As they took that first step of faith to move into the camp of the Syrians, God did something supernatural. He made the people, the, Samaria, uh, the Syrians, to hear the noise, the noise of those their bells and tingling things that announce the presence of leper. So the Syrians were sounding like a, the noise of a great army. And they say to themselves, ah, the king of Israel has gone to hire the kings of the Hittites and the Egyptians to come and fight us. And they ran for their lives. They abandoned their food, their chariots, their silver, their gold. They left their tents just the way they were and took off. In fact, as they were running, some things were dropping because of the haste. Their garments, in fact, if the load was becoming a bottom song, you just let go and save your life first. So the lepers came in and saw these droppings as they were entering the city. They picked the ones they were interested in. They went into the first tent. They saw food, they ate, they drank, and packs of raiment, went and hid, came back again, entered another tent, ate enough, you know, picked whatever, picked silver, picked gold, raiment, and other things that were valuable to them, and went and hid again. At a point, one of them said to them, I think we are not doing the right thing. This day is a day of good news, good tidings. And we keep it to ourselves, we hold our peace, even God will not be happy with us. Let us go and share this good news with our king. That's how they went back to their king and shared the good news. The king found it too good to be true. He had to send some people to go there and verify. In fact, in the heart of the king, that this thing has, these people are setting a bed for them. They know they are hungry. So they litter all these things so that when they come in, they will just engulf them and finish them at once. But lo and behold, the people that the king sent confirmed the story and then brought the entire people of uh, in, uh, Samaria to go in. They ate, they plundered the land, they packed as much as they wanted. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God made the host of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and horses 
even the noise of a great host, that they said to the king of Israel, that they said the king of Israel has hired kings of the Hittites and Egyptians against them, and they fled for their lives. Amen. Amen. After the lepers entered and looted to their satisfaction, they came and found their king. And the king sent some men in there to verify and know it was true. And the people moved in there to also loot and pick whatever they desired. By this time, the king made that his age. The, the, the Lord on whom the king on whom the king laid on. He was made the man in charge of the gates. So because of the rush of the multitude of people, he was trampled upon and he died just as the prophet prophesied. He died. He saw it, but he could not test of it. That same day, according to the words of the prophet, it came to pass that two, a measure of, uh, of flat, fine flour was sold for a chicken and two measures of barley for a shikel at the gates of Samaria. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What lessons does God want us to learn from this passage? Number one. Media, are we still there? Number one lesson we need to learn, please, Media, give us Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20b. 20 Second Chronicles 2020. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe also in his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Have we seen it? Second Chronicles 20, 20, we can take it from the beginning. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. People of God, the Lord is encouraging us to believe in him, the Lord God, and to also believe in his prophets because they are his servants. Nevertheless, because the days are evil and there are so many false prophets around, we need to test the prophets and see if they are from God. A prophet that is from God, when he prophesies a thing, it will come to pass. And he will also magnify God and our Lord Jesus Christ in their prophecy. There are so many fakes around, but the original ones are still there. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's, lesson number one is that we should believe in the Lord our God, so shall we be established. We should believe also his prophets, so shall we prosper. Lesson number two. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Proverbs chapter 3, 5 to 6. Can we read it together? Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not on thy own understanding. 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. People of God, what happened to the king's age was that he was trying to fathom out how possible it's going to be for two measures of fine flour to be sold for a shikel and a measure of barley for a shikel. And he couldn't just see, it didn't add up, it didn't make sense to him. And so he made that declaration. It can only work if God opens the heavens and pours these things down from heaven. But I'm sure to his amazement and so surprise, the word of the prophet came to pass. And unfortunately, because of his unbelief, he could not partake or eat from these benefits. So let us learn to trust the Lord with all our hearts. Do not lean on your own understanding and have said it. Your own human understanding is too small to fathom God out. His ways are past finding out. As the heavens are far away from the earth, so are his ways are far away from us and his things, he does his things the way he wants to do them. But the good thing is that in his own time, he makes all things beautiful. Hallelujah. Amen. Lesson number three will be taken from where we had a second Bible lesson, Matthew chapter six, from verse 25 to 23. The Lord enjoins us 
not to take thought, not to think much about what we will eat, about life, about what we will drink, about what we will put on. And he led us to look around and see the birds of the earth. They don't farm, they don't sow, they don't reap, but God provides for them. The lilies in the valley, they don't spin, they don't sow, but God clothes them. That so much that even Solomon in his array was not as beautiful as the lilies of the valley. Hallelujah. So if God takes time to provide for these other creatures, the birds, the lilies, the grass, how much more you and I, that God created in his own image and likeness, God will provide for us in Jesus' name. By the time you think and think and think, you cannot even add one cubit to your lifespan or your stature. Then rather you'll be inviting more ailments to come to you. Hypertension will set in, and that one certainly lingers. It comes with diabetes, from diabetes to some other complications. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lesson number, is it three or four? Four. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. God knows all about our struggles. He knows our needs even more than you do know them yourself. So he has made adequate provision for you. The problem with us is that we do not seek God first. We run after these material things. And God allows us to do this. We running around ourselves. But if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, God will add every other thing to you. That is to say, all other issues will take a right perspective. Hallelujah. Amen. Finally, let's read from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Let's read it together. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That is the message that God is sending to you this morning. That he knows everything you're passing through, but that you should not be careful or think about anything, but rather through prayers and supplication present your matter before him, and as you present this matter, believe that he has done it. And begin to thank him. As you thank him, leave him to handle the rest for you. First, he will give you the peace that passes all human understanding. And then he will meet you at your point of need. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us rise up as we pray. Media, you will give us Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. We we'll pray from that scripture. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Let's rise for prayers. Second Chronicles 7.14. He says, if my people, not, not Corinthians, so Chronicles. Second Chronicles, please, not Corinthians. Media, are you there? Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. There are four things that God expects us to do. Humble yourself, pray, seek his face, and number four, turn from your wicked ways. Then God will do three things. He will hear from heaven, he will forgive our sins first, and then he will heal our land. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. I don't know what the Lord has ministered to you, but we want to pray for our nation, Nigeria. Let us humble ourselves and go to God in repentance. We are not suffering in Nigeria because we lack the natural resources. But God has endowed us with so much. And we have wasted these numerous resources that God has endowed us with. We have a few persons have packed these resources and given us for themselves. And that is why the masses are suffering. But today, if we call upon the Lord, if we humble ourselves, if we seek the face of the Lord and cry unto God, He will hear us from heaven and He will heal the land. I'm not hearing people pray. Remember in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, 
The children of Israel suffered in the land of Egypt. They were afflicted with so much affliction. But it was on, for 430 years they were there under that affliction. But it was when they cried out to God for help that God sent them help in the person of Moses. So if we keep our mouth shut, help will be far from us. But if we cry to God for help, God will send us help, even the way he sent help to the people in Samaria. May the Lord help us. Open your mouth and talk to God. Pray for mercy upon our nation. Pray that God should forgive us. Forgive our leaders who say you are not there, but people that you voted into power, they are there committing these atrocities, even in crossover states. Many civil servants have not been paid because their names were removed from payroll and replaced with fictitious names and ghost workers. A lot of things are happening. Let God forgive our sins. Let God have mercy upon our land. Let God forgive our leaders and grant them the grace to do the right thing so that God will forgive us and heal our land. It is possible for God to heal our land. If he could make the waters of Mariba to be sweet again, God can make Nigeria to be the beautiful nation that we've always been, the giant of Africa, the pride of the blacks. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, King of Glory, for our nation, Nigeria. We pray, O oh King of Glory, that you forgive our leaders and forgive us for all our sins. We have squandered all the numerous resources you have blessed us with. We have, Father Lord, exercised corruption from top to bottom. We have done abominable things. Father, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon our leaders. Forgive our sins, O oh God, and heal our land. Revamp our economy, O oh God, and restore the good image of Nigeria. Restore, O oh God, the dignity of our great country. Restore the glory of our nation in the name of Jesus. May the Lord hear and answer our prayers in Jesus' name. I want you to pray for yourself. What is it you want God to do for you? Present that matter before the Lord and ask God to show mercy. Father, we give you thanks and praise because as our faces are different, so have our needs and requirements and expectations. Lord God, we pray, O King of Glory, as many I am here, O God, to worship. We ask that you meet each and every one of us at our point of need in the name of Jesus. There are people here that are not even sure of their lunch. There are people here that are not even sure of their transport to go back home. There are people here that are suffering over all hardship and life. But we pray, O God, that you make a way where there seems to be no way. Do we find yourself, O King of Glory? David said in one of the Psalms, I was young and now I'm getting old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor God's children beg for bread. It is not in our days, O King of Glory, that your children will beg for bread. Provide for us according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Finally, I want us to pray for the church. Pray for the church universal using the Presbyterian Church of Nigeria, Old Town Parish, as a point of contact. The financial position of the church is, is, is appalling. I don't know how we got ourselves to this level, but I know God is able to make a way where there seems to be no way. Let God revive the financial situation of the church. Let God also bless the members of the church. If God blesses the members, we will be able to give. We will be able to pay our tithes. We will be able to give generously. And we will not owe our ministers. Pray that God will bless the church. Pray also for, for, for God to, to bless our ministers. They have been patient with us. I don't even know how they are making ends meet. 